Well, we need to have the conversation about vegetables. It's so prevalent in my life right now. Like, you know, of course, Paul, you know, he uh, vehemently, yeah, he's a maybe not vehemently, but he doesn't eat his vegetables. There's lots of those kinds of people and, and that are talking about, you know, oxalates and mm-hmm. sort of the chemical, the, the chemical fighting um, markers it has to remain a plant on a bush so it doesn't die. So lectins, of course, mm-hmm. are such a popular one that so many, especially Gundry, have made popular um, or well known about. So, what is the role of vegetables then? Yeah. So, go I, ahead. I, Just be me, divisive. It's yeah, totally yeah. fine. Well, well, opinion. It's not, it's, yeah. Well, it's not generally my nature to want to be too polarizing. So, I will. I will start by just validating. I love some... that you have an opinion. You're you, you listening to you I, is I do, great yeah. because you you are happy, but I also get the impression from you that no matter what, you're okay to change your opinion if the science or if the oh, yeah. data tells you something different. And so I think as human beings, as we go along in life, we I have lots of things that I believe in. I tell you what, I didn't believe in them back, you know, a year mm-hmm, ago or mm-hmm. five years ago. And that changes for every aspect of my life. So we have to we have to kind of practice something. So right now, what is that practice and awareness? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks. That's a nice way of saying it. Yeah. I mean, I am, I'm a scientist, which means I'm a seeker of truth and I'm constantly trying to prove theories false. Unlike some scientists these days where it's become, you know, almost a religious sort of fervor. Um, but nevertheless, I mean, the nature of a scientist is to prove things wrong. Yeah. I feel like that's yep. totally your guys' domain. You come up with a theory, you you test it out, the math, the science works, and then ev- there is like almost it seems I don't know how many multiples of effort, but there's so many multiples of effort that go into disproving it. Oh, you yeah. guys like are a culture of like trying to vet things out wrong. It's fascinating. Well, we're supposed to be. Um, I, I don't know that we are as much as we used to. Uh, okay. There's a very interesting, well, I, that, that's a tangent that touches on kind of cultural <laughs> issues here. But I mean, there's definitely a trend for that where science is um, kind of turning into a bit of a religious fervor. Now, I don't say that to denigrate religion. I'm myself very religious. Um, but, uh, but, I, but to me, these are different things. And, and I think that in too many instances nowadays, um, when when there is an, a kind of ardent, um, zealous pro- proclamation of, you know, I believe the science or I believe in science, I think belief should have nothing to do with it. It is, it is this cold analytical process of what are the newest data and does it, does it refute or how does it challenge the hypothesis that I was operating under pre- before that? And people have not wanted to continue to do that. They've had some evidence that they believe shows their theory is valid, and then they're done. That might be why they say, I believe the science. It's because they say, I believe what I found is what's true. No, you cannot say that as a scientist. Or if you want to be kind of thinking like a scientist does, or what I should just say is any rational person. But nevertheless, um, to the question about vegetables, I will validate the the concerns that some people have expressed. Um, There are indeed such things known as anti-nutrients. In, in plants that will, to some degree or another, try to blunt, well, try to discourage the animal from eating them, humans included, by, by among other possibilities, preventing the digestion or the absorption of whatever nutrients are in the plant. Now, in our wisdom and ca- capacity, we have bred plants in such a way that very often these anti-nutrients are little I mean, very. I mean, I don't know that you could get rid of them completely, but they would be so minimal as to not truly disrupt the absorption of the, you know, the minerals, the vitamins, or some of the nutrients. Well, the nutrients would only be, really be the macronutrients would only be glucose. But even still, there are such things as anti nutrients. I believe people unwittingly expose themselves to higher levels of it when they eat concentrated sources of vegetable matter, like pea protein or soy protein, if it's not fermented. We know that those anti-nutrients can get enriched in those protein sources, ironically making it so that you can't even digest the limited amino acids you think you're getting. Mm. So, which is why I'm vehemently opposed to plant protein as a supplement, because p- plants are so deficient in protein in general that you have to take, say, a thousand peas and concentrate them to get the amino acid um, serving size that you want. Oh, but while man, you're concentrating, my mind. 
Yeah. yeah well, that's it's because we, what we've it's unnatural. Mankind, humans are not meant to get proteins from plants because plants don't have protein. Yeah. You would be protein deficient, which is why you get a thousand peas, distill them for their amino acids. But in the process of concentrating and concentrating, you end up concentrating anti-nutrients and heavy metals, which is why lead and arsenic can be elevated in plant proteins. Yeah. These, these are, in a way it's common sense, and this has all been validated. There's third party entities that have tested the amount of heavy metals in protein supplements and plant proteins just st um, steal it by a mile. Um, they are the big offenders. Now, I, I don't mean for this to say that no one should ever be a vegan. Um, Knowledge is power though. But I can't apologize if it sounds like I'm saying that because humans are not meant to be vegan. And veganism is a privilege of the elite where you have to be educated enough to know what your deficiencies will be because you will have deficiencies. There's no questioning that. And you have to be wealthy enough to afford the high quality supplements to make up for it. So if you can do that, all right, well then, all right, high five, you're going to be fine, hopefully. But you have to meet those two things. And so don't be telling other people to do it if they don't have the knowledge and they don't have the means to afford the supplements to make up for it. Mm -hmm. So it's two parts. But coming back to the idea of the anti-nutrients, they are genuine, real things, the heavy metals that get enriched when you concentrate the plants, although that wouldn't be a concern in just eating an apple. But that still doesn't change the fact that there's nothing utterly essential to them. Now, there might be something I've been stewing over in my head, what you said about Mindy and the thought about measuring progesterone. There's a part of me that would think, all right, I mean, insofar as progesterone is a hormone that, of course, is essential to gestation and pregnancy, that's pro-gestation. You can't get pregnant without progesterone. You can't carry that little baby. Oh, you wouldn't really ovulate in the first place normally without it right. um, or have a normal ovulatory cycle. Progesterone is among its many effects. It wants fat cells to grow, um, but, but it can't do that without insulin's help. And so maybe there is something to be said for getting a little modest insulin spike from time to time and that enabling progesterone to do what it needs to do among many things, which is want fat cells to grow or want to store more fat. Um, which is one of progesterone's effects, independent of ovulation. It is a it is a fat storage hormone. So maybe there's something to be said for it. But by and large, there's nothing you know kind of quintessentially important or or rather essential um, to the carbohydrate. So my view is they they are this is a food of, well plants vegetables to be more precise because that's how you brought this question up. I think vegetables are things that can be enjoyed. And, and maybe even used deliberately with a purpose for a, to a healthy end. Um, and, and that's why I'm very warm to vegetables. Eaten, not, not don't drink them, of course, don't juice them. Um, but, but in general, I would still say the bulk of what's coming in should be protein and fat. Yeah. Is there any uh, final thought on the vegetables? Is there anything that you can't get from the fat and protein um, from a vitamins, minerals, micronutrients standpoint that you would need a vegetable for? Well, we're pushing the limits of what I know because I'm not a dietitian. You know, I'm a nutrient kind of um, biochemist, but okay. um, I, it would be, I can't readily think of one. Like, for example, people would say, well, you got to get a banana for potassium. Well, you can get plenty of potassium from other things. They would say, well, you got to get leafy greens for vitamin K. Well, you'll get much better vitamin K from cheese or any kind of fermented dairy. Hmm. They would say, you got to get calcium from this. Well, you'll get calcium from, you know, dairy, of course, or what's an, uh, vitamin C. Fiber. They'll say, well, Fiber. if you don't have vitamin C, you will, you will get scurvy. And so you have to eat, um, citrus fruits. Well, um, the, the funny thing there is you use vitamin C to make collagen. That's it's, that's what the C stands oh. for. <laughs> And so if you're already eating a lot of collagen because you're eating meat, well, then you make less collagen and you don't need a lot of vitamin C. So the little teeny bit you get from meat is more than enough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, fiber, um, fiber is not essential. Uh, there's no question about that. It's just essential if people have a particular affection for stool habits, you know, for bowel movement habits, you know, but, but you don't need it. You will still have bowel movements on a purely carnivore diet. They will just be smaller and less frequent. And you will have no gas. I mean, you know, there's no flatulence on a carnivore diet at all. Mm. 
Mm. Wins and losses. Yeah. So that's Um, why every wife wants her husband to be on a carnivore diet. Amen. Just kind of maybe to share what, what your most important practices and beliefs are right now for your health. One kind of mantra or, or idea that keeps me grounded and enjoying life is to take my duties seriously, but not myself, if that makes sense. And so while I appreciate the duties and obligations that I have as a husband, father, as a professor, as a scientist, as as a you know part of my, my congregation and my neighborhood at church, I take all that very seriously, but I don't take myself seriously and I don't take others particularly seriously, which allows me to laugh at my mistakes, to find the humor in the chaos of life and little kids and laugh at those mistakes. So if a kid drops a cup of water on the ground, don't immediately scold and reprimand and and get angry, laugh about it and acknowledge that that was an accident. That kid didn't want to dump that cup over. Um, And so again, take your duties seriously, but not yourself. That to me is a key to, well, I don't know that it'll make life long and healthy, but it will certainly make it more enjoyable. 